Only 45 days until a new administration takes over. But Ned Lamont and Susan Bysiewicz will also be joined by some new constitutional officers. We'll meet one of them today, State Treasurer-elect Sean Wooden, plus two new members of the General Assembly. What do State Representatives-elect Quentin Phipps and Irene Haynes want when they go to Hartford? And the man who replaces Oz, new Metro Alliance CEO David Griggs. Is Hartford on the cusp of greatness? We'll ask him. And our flashback. 20 years ago this week, the nation was buzzing with the big news that the new Patriots were Connecticut-bound, moving to Hartford. All straight ahead this Sunday morning, November 25th, 2018. From Eyewitness News, Connecticut's most watched local political program, this is Face the State. It is 8.30 and a good Sunday morning to you. Thanks for watching Face the State. I'm Dennis House. Big changes are coming to your state government in January. Of course, we're getting a new governor, but we're also getting a new attorney general and a new state treasurer. We had the new AG on last week, and today we are joined by the treasurer-elect, Sean Wooden. And Mr. Wooden, good to see you back here on the program, and congratulations on your election. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be back. You know, people think of the state treasurer job, and they wonder, like, what does this person exactly do, and how does it affect my life? How will your election and your new administration change the lives of people in Connecticut? That, that's a great question, and I've talked a lot about it. I say it's one of the most important jobs in state government that people know the least about. They do. Right? So there's a $35 billion pension system that's focused on the retirement security of state workers, teachers, a uh, host of employees. There's all of the, the state's credit card uh, bonding, and for roads, bridges, infrastructure in our state. Uh, there's a college savings program, 529, uh, CHET as it's known. There's a workers' comp uh, insurance program uh, that's uh, under the treasurer's purview. There are over uh, two dozen boards and commissions dealing with hospitals, higher education, the ports, water ports, the airport. So it's pretty broad reaching. Denise Napier has been in there since uh, 1995. Just about 20, you know. It'll be 20 years yeah, when, yeah, when 20 years. concludes. And uh, so what kind of changes will people notice when you take over? Well, I intend, one, you know, one of the biggest challenges facing the state is dealing with our significant unfunded pension liabilities. And that's something that I think uh, the next treasurer has to be focused like a laser beam on. It's going to take a long time to dig our way out of the problem. So that, that's one piece. Um, the other is I've talked a lot about investing in the right priorities and utilizing the treasurer's office and all of those things that I talked about in terms of the quasi-governmental authorities, Connecticut Innovations, which is our venture capital arm, but looking at ways to make the office uh, clearly more relevant and engaged with local communities. So we can, uh, part of the growth strategy for our state and working with the governor, the legislature, um, and Connecticut Innovations at investing in the state of Connecticut and growing jobs in our economy, looking at infrastructure development, looking at how we support education, but those are some of the ways, and you know, I come from a municipal background, and I, I will always be mindful of, you know, we at the state, we serve everyone in the state, and we have to be a strong support to our local communities. We all chuckled at your commercials that showed you telling your son to squeeze some more toothpaste out of the toothpaste tube. Will yes. you bring that frugal attitude, well, you said you would, to, to the treasurer's office? What kind of cutbacks do you expect that you'll be able to make or cost savings to taxpayers? Well, well, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll look at everything. I just announced my transition team this past week, and we'll take a deep dive in every division of the treasurer's office and looking at how we can improve operations. But beyond that, uh, being fiscally frugal, that's who I've been all my life personally and as a government official, and that will continue being responsible and working with our legislature because a lot of what we need to do as a state uh, necessarily involves cooperation, collaboration with the governor and the legislature. And so looking at how we fund our pension system and whether or not we're responsible in doing so. Looking at the fees that we pay for investment management services and whether or not that's something that can be brought down. Uh, so there are a lot of areas where, where I think there's potential improvement. We've all heard the criticism of the pension fund was not funded well, not, not only for the past 20 years, but even before that. Dating back we're, we're to, looking you know, at, you know, to World War II. Yeah, at least 50 years and in, in longer. And, and, and so what kind of changes will be made well, to I, make that you know, pension fund better? Sure. I say when, when you're in a hole, the first thing you do is stop digging. And as a state, we have on a bipartisan basis, we've kept digging and digging and digging. And so what I mean by that is just not paying in 
the annual contribution amount that's actuarially determined, um, the amount that goes in so that you stay level. So that's the first thing. We have to stop doing that. One of the things that Governor Malloy did, he's one of the first governors in a long time that would say the word pension, I jokingly say, but it's true, and also focused on budgeting for the pension payments. But we've got decades to make up for. That's not going to be enough to get us out of the problem. So we have to look at additional uh, revenue into the pension system for a period of time to shore up the system. The state pension fund generally is 38 percent funded. Um, that is that is pretty scary if you're re uh, relying on retirement uh, from that system. Treasurer Napier has been talking about perhaps putting lottery revenues into this fund. How would that work? I think so that is there's been a lot of discussion with respect to lottery system revenues and I think we have to look at it. But the reality is there, there are no easy choices. So we look at lottery system revenues. Those are existing revenues today that are being utilized to fund something else, right? So let's be honest and realistic about it. It's about reallocating resources. As the principal fiduciary for the pension system, I'm going to be a strong advocate of, of allocating resources to make sure that that system is sound. And so the lottery system is certainly one of them in play. If a taxpayer says to you, you know, I'm not a state worker, I'm not, I'm not a teacher, I'm not part of this pension fund, how does it affect me? How does it affect the average taxpayer, you know, the problems that we're having? <laughs> the, the pension system, whether you're a retiree, your current state worker, or a taxpayer, they all have a significant impact on each of those categories because taxpayers ultimately have to pick up the tab for this. Now, unfortunately, you know, generations ago, there was a lack of fiscal responsibility as it relates to this. And so now, our generation, we have to be responsible in fixing the problem. But that's, it's going to impact every taxpayer because a portion comes out of the operating budget, which taxpayers of our state fund. Sean Wooden, Treasurer-elect, best of luck on your inauguration coming up on January 9th. January 9th. Yes, I'll see you there. I'll be there. Okay, great. All right. In a moment, some new faces and new demands under the Golden Dome. That's coming up next. And a congratulations, look at this, to State Senator Art Lenara, State Representative Caroline Simmons, who are celebrating the birth of their first child, Theodore, known as Teddy. He was born November 16th, seven pounds, one ounce, 21 inches. Dad, by the way, who was on Face State a couple of weeks ago, is a Republican, mom is a Democrat. So for now, we will call Teddy an independent because babies do what they wanna do. And if you want to watch past editions of Face State, you can do so on our YouTube channel or on the WFSB app.